Hey guys, welcome to Cricket Fanatics magazine. This is obviously your exclusive interview with Sune Lewis. And the great thing about this interview is that she's going to be on the cover of the magazine. I don't know if she knows that she is, but she is. And she's going to be the front cover of this particular issue. And this is obviously the main interview for this particular issue. So you guys know what you have to do. Sune, welcome to the show. It's great to see you. I haven't caught up with you in, in some time now. I think the last time I spoke to you was when you were still in lockdown and lockdown was heavy. So how have you been and how has things been for you in the in recent times? Yeah, thanks so much for having me. Um, no, it's been really good. Um, I think since we last talked in, in lockdown, a lot has happened. We played a lot of series. We won all of them. Um, I had some personal success as well. So, no, everything's been going very good. And we're at the World Cup at the moment, which is very exciting. It must be very exciting. And, I mean, for us as fans, we've been following you for so long and obviously following the Proteus Woman and being so proud of your performances until now. You've got another opportunity, another crack at the World Cup. Let's talk about it because course uh, something obviously unexpected happened leading up to this world cup and the last time we spoke to we spoke about your leadership qualities and now uh you are now the captain of the team obviously because Dane obviously picking up an injury unfortunately um but from your perspective coming into this role was it natural for you because i know you've done it before with the proteas but how did the team react um to your captaincy so far yeah, I think because I've done it a couple of times before, um, I think last year we had uh, the Pakistan series at home and the India series away um, where I captained those sides. Um, so I, I don't think that it's anything new for the team. We've obviously been together and, and we've been together in these roles before. So um, hopefully there's a lot of trust going around. Um, and... Uh, and I think it's a it's a big honor and a privilege to you know to captain your side at a at a special event like a World Cup. It's really exciting. It's also a bit nerve wracking because I haven't done it before and it's and it's not just another series. Um, like yeah, I think every game is going to be played like a final, so I think that just adds a bit a bit of pressure as well. But luckily, I have ten players on the. Um, on the um, field with me as well who trust me and and. I think, and hopefully you trust my leadership skills. So, um, no, it didn't really come as a surprise. Um, I think we had a had a chat with management quite early when we heard the news um, of Dene, unfortunately, not being able to be here. So I um, had a lot of time to prepare and just wrap my head around it. So when it comes to you as a captain and your philosophy and what you follow, what sort of captain are you? Um, are you someone that likes to use instinct on the field or are you a person that likes to rely on others around you and try and communicate with the senior people around you or is it a blend of everything how would you describe your captaincy yeah i think it's a it's a bit of a blend of everything um i used to be captain at our provincial team back home as well so there there's not really a, a prerequisite plan of what we're going to do um, because it's it's obviously provincial cricket, so anything can happen on the day. So you kind of have to use your instincts, and I think that's where I kind of developed that skill. Um, and I, I don't think it's any different at the pro tier level. I think you obviously have a plan going in, and you have a couple of A, B, and Cs, but um, anything can happen on the day. So you obviously got to be vigilant in that, and you have to follow your instincts as well. Um, but I do use the experienced players on the field all the time. I think it's very important to have that support system and to have that input of different players as well. Um, they might see something that I don't, and it's yeah, and it's always important just to not double check, but just kind of ask, you know, what you guys saw. Or, um, are you backing this plan that I have? Um, and it's always nice to to have a shibnam or. A, you know, Mignon or my vice captain, Chloe, um, just saying, Snay, you're on the right track, keep going. Um, and that really motivates me on the field. So I think, you know, that kind of combined with staying as calm as possible um, is something I really try to do just for the team and for myself. I think I'm not a very frantic person. I'm, I'm normally very chilled. Um, so I try and, and portray that in my captaincy as well. That's awesome. And with regards to Dane Fenikek as well, any conversations there? Because she was watching you guys obviously quite closely when you played in, in the 
against the West Indies. She was obviously the Coventry box. So you were listening to some of her insight and 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 what she was saying about you guys, about yourself as well. So have you spoken to her um, about some tips or getting some advice from her? Um, I'm sure she would have probably picked up the phone when to, to wish you well as well. Uh, yeah, I think those conversations are going to happen closer to our World Cup games. Um, obviously, the the wishing well messages as well. I'm sure it's going to come through very soon before we start the World Cup. Um, but I've I've been playing under her as a captain, so I know what um, what she's about and and what she wants the team to achieve. Um, and my focus and my goal is is 100 on that as well. So I think you know our goals and our motivations are very aligned. That's excellent. And you've been in great form as well, personally. And being an all-rounder yourself, particularly in white ball cricket, you know, there's there's a lot of pressure on, on spin bowlers uh, to get it right. Uh, I've seen, from from watching you closely as well, I've seen how your, your game has improved dramatically with, with your bowling and your batting. You just continuously get better and better. So what's been key to your success? Um, and when it comes to your role in the team, and deciding what is best for the team as a captain or what's best for the team um, if you weren't the captain. Like sometimes, how much does your captaincy obviously influence that decision? Like, for example, putting yourself into bowl or batting high up the order, etc. Yeah, I think obviously being captain and and having to perform goes hand in hand. I think it's it's very important for myself to to kind of when I have to bowl a bat with the captaincy aside because then I'm a bowler first or a batter first. So I think that's quite important when I go into bowl to not just think about think about my bowling as a captain, um, to still think about my bowling as as Sine, the player first. Um, and I think that's it's kind of where I got it right and where I'm going on in the right direction. Um, when we had the, the West Indies series. So I'm kind of just trying to find that balance um, as good as I can. And hopefully that can just, you know, portray in the World Cup as well. Let's talk about the World Cup as well. And New Zealand specifically, I want to talk about conditions, etc. preparation for conditions. And your, your obviously the thought process and aim going in will be to win it. Yeah, so... It's it's quite a big World Cup for us. Um, I think we've been preparing for this World Cup since the 2017 World Cup, actually, where we lost in that final against England. Um, I think all our focus has been on this World Cup and and what we want to achieve. And I think it's obvious that we want to bring, you know, the World Cup home. So it's it's a big one for us. And for a couple of players, it might be their last one. So I think it it carries a lot of weight. Um, but I think we've prepared well. We've played in New Zealand last year around this time as well, and we were very successful in that series. And I think we've been watching a lot of cricket on television with um, New Zealand playing against India women at the moment in some of the places where we're going to play um, and just looking at the conditions and, and also looking at the players as well. So I think preparation is good. Um, I think the conditions are going to be very good most likely not really good for spinners. Um, it looks kind of like a road wherever we go. Um, but I think spinners are obviously going to play a role um, on any surface, really. So, no, I think we've got a well-balanced team. Um, we've got good batters. They can chase big scores and can set high scores as well, as we saw in our last or second last ODI in West Indies as well, getting almost to a 300 mark. So I think we... We're in a good space at the moment, and the girls are very excited to get going. What do you think has been key to your the culture in the camp and keeping this winning mentality in the team? Because the Proteus women's team, since I've been watching and, and reporting on it, etc., there has been an incredible increase in performances, increase in um, the amount of players that are being produced. There's more and more talent coming through the system as well. We've seen with the Women's Super League as well. So... What's been key to the to the Proteus women's success over so such a long period of time? Yeah, I think uh, we have to say that you know some of the girls play in different leagues all around the world, um, and they gain experience from that. They gain new insight from that. Maybe new coaching staff, um, new coaching styles, um, and playing with you know some of the biggest names in the in the world. Um, and I know. Um, when I played at the Big Bash and at the Kia Super League, that information that you get, you kind of bring that back um, and you try and implement it here as well. 
So I know some of the girls do that. Um, and I think that makes a huge difference as well. Just getting to play with, with the different players around the world, with the different coaching staff um, and getting that information and getting new experiences. Um, but in saying that, I think as well, you know, players with the work of our management team have put in a lot of hard work over the last few years. Um, and something we've been really trying to do is just focus on our basics and our skills and not worry too much about the opposition. I think in previous times, you know, when we played in England or Australia, you would kind of go all struck when we played against them and that would kind of um, decrease your level of skill and confidence and everything. But I think, you know, now I think since actually the girls have been playing with them in the same team, um, that awe struck and that, um, you know, looking at your role model or whatever and playing against them kind of decreases. Whereas we, I think we're just on the same playing field at the moment. Um, and I think the girls' confidence are very high. They trust their skill. They trust their ability. And um, I think that's a very important aspect of the game. You know, something that I respected about something you said in the pre-match uh, interview that you had, and you spoke about putting your, the team in a situation that is going to challenge them. And I thought that was quite brave as a, as a move or, an, or a decision to make to say, look, yeah, we have the shortcoming. We may be not good at this particular aspect of the game. Let's put ourselves and test ourselves at that. Um, do you feel now going into this World Cup that you guys are 100% prepared from every aspect that you thought were your weaknesses? Yeah, I think preparing for a World Cup and having a pre-series, um, yes, obviously the the goal is to win the series and to gain momentum. But I think it, our goal was also to try different combinations and put ourselves in in different situations where you can get you can get those situations at a World Cup. So I think it was really important for us to to challenge our I wouldn't say weaknesses, but you know our something that we won't normally do first or something that we don't really prefer. Um, so I think that was really important just to cover all our bases coming to a World Cup because we know we're not always going to win a toss. We're not always going to do something that we prefer. Um, so that was really important for us leading up to this World Cup. Obviously, there's a lot of stars in your team uh, and there's a lot of youngsters as well. There's an amazing balance. Um, so, talking about your balance going in, do you, f do you feel that you guys have all your bases covered when it comes to selection? And um, how ready do you feel everybody is going into this World Cup? Yeah, I think we've got a blend of, of a variety of players. Um, I think we've got our most experienced players in Mignon Dupre and Shibnam and Trisha. Um, to the youngsters, um, you know, left team Schlaba, um, to Mise Kakuni, and then we've got our, our middle group uh, where Laura Volpard comes in and Aya Bonga Kaka, um, and I would say myself as well. Um, so I think we've got a nice blend of experience and not so experienced and uh, semi-experienced players. Um, and I think we also got a lot of variety in our bowling attack as well. Yes, we've got a couple of seamers, but they're all different types of seamers. They're all bring something different to the table. Um, and with our batters as well, we've got, um, you know, people that can smash the ball in Lizelle and Tasman and people that rotates and runs very well in Mignon. Um, and then we've got our classic opening pair, Lizelle and, and Laura, um, that's been so consistent for us in the past. Um, and then you got Chloe Tryon back, which I'm really excited about. Um, I think she's shown in the in the West Indies series what she can do with bat and ball. And I think since she's been bowling, she's been adding, you know, a lot of value to the team, just throwing those left arm orthodox um, and giving us a couple of overs just to run away with. So, no, I think we've got a well-balanced team. I think, you know, our first 11 on the field, it's going to be a tough spot to get into that. Um, I think everybody's been fighting very hard to get into the top 11. Um, it's been a really... A really challenging part for us because we've got so or so much talent at the moment, and all the players are performing. So it's it's making our job and the selectors' job very difficult, but a good difficult. So that's really something I'm excited about. And the girls are very excited for the World Cup um, because we came out of quarantine three days early. The World Cup hasn't officially kicked off yet, so it doesn't really feel like a World Cup at the moment. <laughs> but when we walked into in the streets and um, there's banners already that's advertising the World Cup. 
um, and that's been giving us a feel of the World Cup. So we're really excited when all the, you know, all the celebrations and everything starts off in the media. Um, so that's going to be really fun. The World Cup is always a vibe. Um, there's always a lot of just chatter around the town where you're playing at. Um, so it's just, it's going to be really fun and we're just really excited to get it going. Yeah, so us as a fan base, we've been on quite a few heartbreaking um, moments with you guys um, that weren't in your control always. Um, but when you look at the T20 World Cup, we obviously look at the, at the previous World Cup as well. But do you have a message to the fans that you can give to the fans that are going to be obviously supporting you loyally throughout this tournament? Yeah, obviously, it's uh, the World Cup can go either way with, with stuff that's not in our control. And and that's always the hard part for everyone. But I think, you know, we've been playing the best cricket that we possibly can. And we've just been doing what we can and what we can control. Um, so we're definitely trying our best to get to that final. Um, and if the, you know, the crowd and the supporters can just be patient with us and take each game like it's a final and, you know, take each game on its own, um, then that will be highly appreciated and just take us to the next game with, with all the messages and the love on social media and wherever you guys can reach us. That'd be awesome. So, guys, thanks a lot for tuning in. Thank you, Sune, for coming on the show as well and giving us this exclusive interview. I know it's been been very busy at your side, so I appreciate it for you to give your time to us um, as, a, as a fan base to, to, to hear your thoughts. And, guys, this is the World Cup edition. It's the Women's World Cup edition. And the entire magazine is all about the Women's World Cup. So interviews from the likes of Sune and other players too, as well in the team, as well as the coach. So please go ahead and download this issue. The link will be in the description. Go ahead and do so right away. It's 100% free, including all back issues, straight to your inbox every single month. Sune, good luck to you and the team. Um, thanks a lot for joining us, and we'll see you very soon. Awesome. Thank you so much for the interview. Have a good day and download the magazine. <laughs> Thanks.